Good morning and welcome to this Eucharist on the fourth Sunday of Easter. We have a few moments of stillness before we begin our service. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us praise and exalt him forever. Blessing and honour and glory and power be in him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So we're going to sing our opening hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, Father of our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring, keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. So let us say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above where he reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is, comes from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders of sign were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, <coughs> and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, and distribute the proceeds to all, as had a need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number who was, who was being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the first letter of Peter. For it is to your credit if, being aware of God, you endure pain whilst suffering unjustly. If you will endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure what, when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to, to, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you as an example, so you may follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges just, uh, justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we may live for righteousness. By his wounds, that he, by his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. <clears throat> the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used his figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak and may be heard in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's always a challenge when we hear these readings about the Good Shepherd. Because actually, well, I don't know about you, but I don't know that many shepherds. And actually the method of farming which is employed today is very different to that of the of first century Judea of the time when Jesus is speaking. Because Jesus isn't talking about a farmer who goes to the field, tends to the sheep, goes home again, has supper with his wife and so on. He's talking about the, the shepherds 
who would live with the sheep. If you cast your mind back to the Old Testament, David, before he was called upon to be king of Israel, he was a shepherd. And when he was to be anointed, he was found caring for the sheep. Similarly, when we think about the, uh, uh, the nativity, the shepherds were out at night with their sheep. To be a shepherd was not a part-time role. You would be out for weeks, living off the land, living with the sheep. And as part of that, actually, it was not well respected. You would think, actually, putting that much effort into caring for livestock would be you know, well, re well rewarded. But because you lived with the sheep, you were ritually unclean. You were not able to go to temple. You were not able to offer sacrifices and so on because you had been living with the animals. And so when Jesus is talking about himself being the gate and he being the good shepherd and all the other symmetry, the imagery that he uses around him being the shepherd of the people, he's indicating that actually that he is one of us. He is very much like us in that he is the embodiment of humanity. He is saying that actually he is living with us. He is not there, you know, kind of remote, looking down from afar, as we have with God the Father. Because actually, but he's he's there with us. But actually, this imagery is goes beyond that because actually, nowadays, if we look at shepherds who who look after the sheep, they're safe. The sheep are well looked after. They're cared for. There are no risks from that you know that many wild animals or dogs or anything else attacking them. But in first century Judea, they existed. Wolves and, and, and lions, they existed. And people actually go and stealing the sheep. And so this imagery of actually the good shepherd knowing the sheep. And then following them because he, was, he would protect them. And at night he would construct a barrier to corral the sheep. And he would literally sleep at the entrance to it. Jesus is, identifies himself as the keeper of the gate. He identifies himself as being the shepherd. Because through him, we are kept safe. Through him, we are looked after. And this is not just a figure of speech. He's using this metaphor because, as you do, his, the people listening, this is what they would understand. There's no point telling them about kind of the, the high orders of, uh, uh, of the temple. Because, actually, that wasn't their reality. It'd be, it's very similar to if you, I go to start talking about something completely alien to our culture, it would be lost, because actually it's not relevant. So we need to talk about that which is relevant. But there's another element which I'd like to look at, which is actually that bit of Acts. If you go, I'm going to go back to it. And it says, They devote themselves to the Apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. The Eucharist, at this point, is being unable to be received by all of us. But it is also incredibly important because of it. Because actually this is what Jesus taught us to do. And actually from yeah, actually that book of Acts, it's only the second chapter. It is very early in the new Christian movement as it was then. This new sect. They knew the imperative of being able to share this common meal. To be able to share in prayer. To spend time actually with God. And this is incredibly important. Because no matter what's happening, we need to be able to spend time with God. Because as he says in, in the Gospel, we come, to, we come to salvation through him. But the only way that we will know him is by spending time with him. We need to spend time and be with God in order that we will know him. And actually there's, a, a, there's an element here which we need to think about, which is actually that stillness. That stillness of being able to spend time with God, not just saying, actually God, this is my list of prayers, this is what I need you to do. But actually God knows what we need. He knows what we need before we say it. But actually we need to be able to spend time listening for God. For that stillness and that small voice. And so, really, we need to be able to spend time so we know the shepherd's voice. And that is partly spending time with our Bibles. It is spending time in prayer. Spending time with having spiritual communion as we cannot receive physical communion. This is the time when we need to really connect with God as best we can. And at times it's going to be tough. Actually, there are days when it is really tough. 
but we do need to spend that time. We need to be able to spend time properly with God, because He is the Good Shepherd. Through Him we have salvation. Through Him is our salvation and our sanctuary. But we are not thieves, we are not bandits, we are coming through the gate, through Christ. And we will know His voice when we hear it. But we must be ever mindful and listening. So we're going to confess our faith and the faith of the whole church in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, the Good Shepherd, the one who cares for and looks after us, watches over us, and calls us by name. Lord, may we ever be mindful, listening for your Son's voice. May we follow when he calls. May we be led by him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this benefice, for its parishes, for your churches, and for your congregation. We pray for all those who are separated, for all who are anxious to meet. We pray for all who are unable to receive communion. We pray for all who are desperately seeking you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation, those who are in quarantine, those who are shielding, those who are in hospital, and those who have died. We pray for all those families who are mourning the loss of a loved one. For all those who are angry or upset. All those who are struggling to come to terms with their loss. We give you thanks too, Lord, for those who are recovering. For those who are returning to their homes from hospital. For those who are able to be reunited with their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for and give thanks for all the key workers. For those who are ensuring that our shops are with food, that we have all that we need. For those who keep the lights on and the, the water hot. For those who ensure that we have all that we can to, to remain at home, to remain safe. We thank you for all those who put themselves in harm's way to help others. We pray for and hold before you particularly the work of the NHS, for those who work in care homes, for those who visit the housebound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for all throughout the world who are being affected by this virus. We pray for all who are struggling at this time, for all who are anxious. 
Lord, send your calming spirit upon those who are struggling. We pray for all those who face uncertain futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are in mourning at this time. We pray for those who carry the scars of loss. We pray for those who are having to arrange funerals at this time, and for those who have not been able to attend them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for all those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray particularly for those who are coming to the end of their lives. We pray for all those who are in end-of-life care, and for their families who are unable to see them, separated by distance or by countries. We pray too for those who have recently lost their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness, let us offer to God the thoughts and prayers of our innermost heart. So unite our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas and all the saints. We say together, Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. So we're going to sing our offertory hymn, which is, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Yeah. 
creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. As the grains once the sp sp scattered on the on the as the grains once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom, Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts; we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the power of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. From the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady, St. Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. So let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to be laid down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, you have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at his end behold you, in the glory of the eternal trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing our final hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the believer's ear. This is his sorrow, heals his wounds, and drives away. with 
So just to give you a quick announcement of services this week, Monday through Friday we'll have morning and evening prayer for, at 9am and 5pm and they'll go onto YouTube shortly after that. On Friday it is a bank holiday, I appreciate the days are kind of losing significance in which they are, but it is a bank holiday on Friday for VE Day, the 75th anniversary of VE Day, and there will be a special anniversary service here at 12 noon. So please do join for me for that if you can. On Sunday, we will have our Eucharist as normal at 10 a.m. The music we have this week has been courtesy of St. Martin's in the Field. Uh, they, their choral scholars have been producing music for use by the Church of England. Uh, so we are immensely grateful to them for their singing prowess and for accompanying us in our worship today. So we'll stand for, our, for the final blessing. The Lord be with you, and also with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him his risen life, and the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, of, in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.